Well, hey everyone and welcome. I'm your friend, Art of Mana, and let's dive into a video about the Ouya. Now, for many of you, the Ouya probably elicits one of two reactions. The first being, Ouya, what's that? And the second being, Ouya, oh no. Now, for those of you in the latter camp, please bear with me because eventually I will be explaining why I think the Ouya is a very cool little system worth your time. And for those of you in the former camp, let me go ahead and introduce you to this little micro console called the Ouya. Now, this is the console itself, and uh, let me go ahead and show you the controller as well. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the system. But first of all, isn't that a really cool looking controller? For those of you in the latter camp of the Ouya Oh No, Come on, come on, isn't that cool looking? All right, all right, bear with me. Let's go ahead and dive into what this console is. Now, looking back at the hardware, the Ouya is about three inches in a cube design meant to be plugged into a modern television through HDMI. It also supports Bluetooth wireless controller connectivity and support for multiple controllers at once, four being the intended amount. Now the Ouya is an Android based micro console and it was intended to be a very open platform from the very beginning, again based on Android so pretty simple to develop for and furthermore every single system was itself a dev kit, meaning that anyone with the system could develop games for it and for release on the platform. In fact, Ouya was so motivated to have new developers join the ecosystem that they created a development section of the OS simply with videos and tutorials on how to develop video games for the first time and for this console. The Ouya ran Android 4.1 with a custom Ouya launcher. This meant that porting games over from the Android ecosystem was fairly straightforward. Games are all available digitally with no physical releases whatsoever. The additional aspect of this system that was appealing to many was that all games were intended to be free to download. Eventually there became a caveat to this and microtransactions were allowed. Later on, some games just outright cost money to buy. This didn't come at the start, but once it did, you saw larger development teams release bigger games, which was a positive aspect, but there was already this strange ecosystem where some games had in-app purchases, and it wasn't always clear until later software upgrades what games cost money and what didn't. Now the system retailed for about $100, and what you would get was a slightly out-of-date Android device. It had a NVIDIA Tegra 3 system on a chip and an ARM Cortex A9 CPU at 1.7 gigahertz. Its GPU was an ultra low power GeForce at 520 megahertz. And you can actually tell already that some of what is in this hardware is what you can see in a much more evolved form in the Nintendo Switch. However, at the time, this was a little low power and unfortunately heated up quickly. So the bulk of the device was a single system fan that would mount on the motherboard of the Ouya and draw air from its base and out through the top. The Ouya could connect to the internet through Ethernet or 802.11 BGN wireless network. Now, with that out of the way, let's look a little bit at the history of where this console came from. Now, when I first heard about the Ouya, I believe it was through Nintendo Life or another tech blog that I followed at the time. And whatever the source was, it directed me to the Ouya's Kickstarter, which at that time was a platform I had never actually encountered before. You all know it's a crowdsourced funding platform, and Ouya was actually one of its biggest success stories. But at the time, I didn't trust it, and so I didn't back Ouya. But I was really interested in the console because of what I saw. And even though the Kickstarter campaign is long over, their page is still up, so I thought it would be fun to go and revisit it. Right off the bat, Ouya, a new kind of video game console, a very big claim. Their little catchphrase or their little synopsis is cracking open the last closed platform, which they call the TV. A beautiful, affordable console built on Android by the creator of Jambox. So 
some pretty neat things right off the bat. Looking at their campaign, I mean, look at that. Eight and a half million dollars raised from 63 and a half thousand backers. So pretty impressive at the time, no doubt. And there is this video here I'd like to watch because this is actually something that I really remember. Uh, and I watched it multiple times being really excited for this console. So let's watch it together. I'll pause it at moments just to share some thoughts and uh, see what this looks like. Here we go. I love video games, but more and more people are moving away from the television. There's a lot of focus today on the mobile and web platform. It's easier to develop games for those platforms. The television costs a lot of money. You have to work with established players in the space. And I've been trying to figure out how do we get them back to it. And that was really interesting. Now, the Wii was out at this time, and you did see the beginnings of some of these independent publishers or smaller publishers, but really not so much. I mean, even WiiWare tended to be from larger developer teams. Uh, maybe it was a side project or something like that. But really, mobile was where most of the indie development was and where a lot of the excitement around indie uh, titles was. At that time, it just was easier to develop for iOS and Android. It was kind of an interesting thing to bring that then to a TV. I've been a part of the game industry for a really long time. In the early days of gaming, you could take your Apple IIe, write your own programming, and, and take your game to market. Which, that right there is pretty cool. And, and I think that's one of the reasons that the Ouya was ahead of its time, because now you're starting to see some of these more open platforms for development. And this sort of ZX Spectrum idea of, hey, you know what, here's something you can tinker around with, develop some code, and you don't just buy a computer to use it, you buy a computer to interact with it. Console business as it is today is completely closed to the independent developer. The process overhead for console development is really just too much for us. I love the television and I want those games on the television. And that it was something that I felt as well. Even though I was enjoying playing my mobile titles on my iPod Touch at the time, I still preferred playing on a TV. I still do to this day. We wanted to make a great product. I went out to find the best people that can do it, and that's Eve Behar and the Fuse Project. Over the years, we've worked on a lot of projects that take a certain technology and make it available to, to many. I mean, the $100 laptop is... That's right. I forgot that this is who was involved in the $100 laptop. If you don't know anything about this, this is a really cool project. It was a very tough and durable, rugged $100 laptop with giant Wi-Fi antennas so that even if you were in the middle of uh, a very... Um, low population area, you could possibly still get internet connection. Uh, again, it was really durable. It was intended to bring this technology to places where the infrastructure and the economy meant that it was not, not really possible or feasible to do so. Really cool project. One and the jam box, for example, we like to use all the different parts of design, you know, fuse them together, whether it's industrial design or user experience. The most important part of this to us is the controller. We really focus a lot on what gamers are looking for. Precise controls, tactility, right sizing. Now, the controller, again, is actually probably my favorite aspect of the Ouya and what intrigued me about the Ouya so much right off the top. Uh, seeing them develop it with pieces of wood and a bandsaw, the whole thing is really, really cool. I think at the time I was jealous because I wanted to create a controller. It's still kind of a dream of mine. But this controller, I just think is so innovative and awesome. I love the touchpad on it. I love the look of it. I love that these little magnetic pieces, these cover plates come off to hide the batteries. It's just a really good looking controller and it feels great in the hand. Unfortunately, it's not perfect. There were some connectivity problems, some hardware issues where in the first batch, some of the buttons stuck under the uh, faceplate, so there were some issues. Now, just for fun, I actually do want to take a look at this little article from Nintendo Life. Uh, it was a random article. The Ouya Pad lives on as a knockoff Nintendo Switch Pro controller, which I think is pretty awesome because I, again, love the design of the Ouya controller. This is a controller I actually would like to pick up for my Switch, even though it does miss a few of the uh, pieces of functionality that are in the actual official Pro controller. But it's just kind of neat. 
I love that they took the the two sides of the Ouya controller and matched it to the colors of the Switch. Anyway, obviously a lot of care and attention was put into this design, and so it's cool to see it continue, even though completely unlicensed and I'm sure not fully endorsed by Eves. The more we have something like this open console that can, can break that, it's going to open it up for a new business segment for the independent developers. Since it's Android based, we have a, a great 3D port of Cannonball that's on Android already. Uh, that would be really fun to see up on the TV. We have a prototype and it works. We'll have all the game genres you love. Shooters, platformers, sports, and RPGs. We'll have games from major game publishers and indies too. We'll have a full store of games, all free to play. Minecraft is going to be on it. I don't think Minecraft was ever on Ouya. In fact, that is one of the things I was so sad about because I wanted to play Minecraft, but I didn't actually have a computer really capable of playing it, which is why later when I started streaming, uh, it was right after we got our, our new computer and I was able to stream and play Minecraft. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for me to say, hey, look, I'm a Minecraft newbie and let's play this together. However, I do want to point out, this is really interesting, Notch is uh, on my Ouya. This is one of the Kickstarter special Ouyas that I picked up, used later on, and uh, Notch's name is right there at the top. Now, he's listed as the 85th backer. I believe the numbers correspond to what uh, backer you were. Notch, right there, a big backer of this, not only because uh, you see here Minecraft being involved in it. But I think that whole idea of disrupting the idea that you have to make these big AAA games and be these big development teams in order to produce good games. Switch TV, so you can watch StarCraft and League of Legends. This is the perfect hybrid to have something that's inexpensive, it's open, and it comes with a fantastic controller. It's open for hackers that want to tweak the box and make it their own. This is a big undertaking. Effectively, we're trying to disrupt an established industry. You know, at that time in the video game industry, this was hitting all of the right things. You know, it was it was different, it was disruptive, it was creating a place for people to be creative in the video game industry and make new experiences, which would of course impact everyone who plays games but also it would support those making those games and could get them a foothold into the video game market. And I really think that they were onto something here with this idea of the TV being the hub for video games and where a lot of people really remember their best video game experiences. Being a console gamer myself, someone who grew up playing on Nintendo platforms, the TV has always been my favorite place to experience video games, and I really liked the idea of bringing the mobile titles I enjoyed on my iPod Touch at the time to the television. Even something like Cannibal being a game I remember playing on my iPod Touch quite a bit. I also think they really had been clued into the idea that design matters uh, because it, to me, this was attractive. It looked gorgeous, the controller, was incredible looking. I still think this thing is one of the best looking controllers. And it's unfortunate that their design went with form over function. <laughs> um, not so much that they they were looking at form at the expense of function, but that the function just wasn't there. And I think that's ultimately the problem. That is what created the issue for Ouya is that it didn't have the hardware to back up its ambitious ideas. And thankfully, the Ouya existed and was able to launch a lot of these ideas. And we see them now in every iteration of digital distribution shops. The eShop on Nintendo Switch is full of indie titles and inexpensive games to purchase. And a lot of games that are free to download as well. Right now, we're seeing a beautiful blending of the indie titles as well as triple a titles if you will and you're even seeing nintendo take chances you know incorporating shovel knight the indie darling into smash brothers ultimate and um i forget the name of it right now i can't believe i i am i think it's cadence of hyrule but that game having the zelda franchise being p placed in the hands of an indie developer pretty phenomenal stuff Oh, yeah.
<laughs> so let me go ahead and turn my controller on. And it's just going to flash a couple of times for me until it makes a connection. This is one of the Revision 2, I believe it is, controllers. The Revision 1 had some wireless uh, connectivity problems. I have three of those and one of these. So unfortunately, unless um, you want to play uh, with wired controllers or other wireless solutions, then uh, there's really only one good OUYA controller I have. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and uh, take a look. First of all, the Discover Store, this is what's actually going to be gone very soon. This is how you would see uh, what was new, what's trending. Apparently, Bomb Squad is still a standout title, but you can see there's quite a few things that are here, and I have a lot of them as well. I guess it goes through, gosh, a lot. But let's go ahead and just dive into a couple of games really quickly just to give you a little look. Now, I do have my favorites here. I've unlocked everything, right? So you have to start at the top there. Oh, so close. And uh, there we go. Ah, see, I got hit when he went to spikes. Oh, no, and I fell out. Now we just double tap the OUYA button in order to get the system menu. We can exit the game from here. Click OK. And I'm noticing that I have, I believe, overscan enabled. This is something which some TVs required because if you're at all familiar with overscan back in the day a lot of times information wasn't edge to edge there was sort of extra data that was used and there was this black bar around and so tvs actually zoomed in but when you don't need that of course which most modern displays don't um and most modern consoles don't and then it just creates this useless black bar so we can go into advanced I believe there's an overscan option. Yes, overscan information, turn the compensation off. And I think this actually improves performance anyways. So we may actually have a nice little boost in our performance. So let's go ahead and check out Super Indie Carts, another favorite of mine. This is an older version of Super Indie Carts. It's gone through many iterations and is available on other systems and consoles. However, I believe this is the only one that still allows you to play as, get this, the OUYA console. It's fun, it's enjoyable. I think the real exciting part of it is how many indie titles are incorporated into a, this kart racer. It's just a, a clever concept that's executed well, if not perfectly. Let's double tap and go back now to the cream of the crop. If you don't know about Towerfall Ascension, this is really, truly the, the main reason to have an Ouya. This could be considered the killer app, Towerfall Ascension being essentially what the Ouya was all about. You could take this device to a friend's um, or out to uh, whatever, you know, an event, hook it up very easily and connect four controllers. Four people could play simultaneously. This is a fun couch competitive game. This is one of those games which I'm really grateful they've updated so it does not require uh, anything to, uh, it doesn't require a, a check of whether or not you've purchased the game. Uh, once the OUYA store is gone and down, that the servers are closed, that won't happen. Uh, that won't, there won't be any network connections. So if you have games requiring that, you won't be able to play them. Thankfully, they've updated this so that that won't be an issue and we can still play this game. I intend to take my OUYA with me. So the whole idea here being that you're this little uh, character on the screen and you go through rounds, uh, in this case, um, cooperatively taking out all of the baddies and stuff with your bow and arrow they can dodge and whatnot you can recollect your arrows and in competitive mode you're playing competitively with others so one of these days i really do want to stream this with friends and uh i think it would be really cool i want to do a full-on competitive thing but the Ouya is still my favorite place to play this, even though I now do have it on Steam. Make sure I grab all my arrows. You have limited ammunition. 
You can also bop on the heads of enemies like so. And it's just great fun all around. So there you have it. That's our short look at the Ouya, a video game console that ultimately failed, but which I think is responsible for a lot of good ideas in the video game industry today. In fact, I think the Nintendo Switch brought to full fruition some of the great concepts that the Ouya created and developed. Unfortunately, the Ouya is not well received today, and I think it's rather undeserving of the negativity that it attracts. Of course, it is a failed console ultimately, and you probably already can tell there are some shortcomings in this device. But I have a lot of fond memories of playing it, and I continue to play it to this day, and I am happy that it's in my collection, and it's something that I'd certainly intend to go back to on occasion. If you're interested in seeing some gameplay from the Ouya, my intent is this month to devote some time on my Twitch channel to live stream some Ouya content. This is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, since the very first year of my streaming back in the Minecraft days. In fact, if you go back to some of my old VODs, you can actually find me talking about the Ouya back then. It took me until now and maybe no more appropriate time to stream than today exists because this Ouya is going out with a slow fizzle. So I hope to bring a little more hype around the console and hopefully bring a little bit more positivity around its name. So join me on twitch.tv slash art of mana. If you don't follow me on there already, please do. That's where the bulk of my content is. And thank you so much for watching. As always, do good and be well. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.